their experiences will unfairly influence their college experiences in ways those students never could have imagined when they arrived here as a freshman. So now with all these horrific and real experiences, what do we do? What do we do now? I've tried to lay this all out, and I know a lot of it is really hard to take in here. But this is because there's injustices happening on our campus every single day that go unseen. Things that I believe we as a community have a responsibility to address. Now there are no easy answers, but I know one thing for sure, we can't stop and do nothing. That's why this USG administration has put together an incredibly ambitious platform. 65 items to be exact, and that list grows every single day as new issues are brought to our attention. All of you should have gotten a copy, hopefully you're able to look through that, and you'll notice that some of the issues sound familiar. This year, we will continue to focus on important issues from last year, like mental health. We hope to see a student wellness fee passed by the Board of Regents in the near future that will support the hiring of more counselors to reduce wait times for students. We hope to see populations like student veterans get the adequate support and mental health resources they need. And we hope to see additional counselors hired from underrepresented backgrounds to best connect and serve our students. Based on our platform, UISG is always also looking at creative ways to improve mental health, including increased pet therapy with permanent access to therapy dogs on campus and outdoor yoga on the contest. When it comes to student success, we also want to start serious conversations about moving success at IO modules offline. We must do more to move important discussions like sexual assault, diversity and inclusion, and alcohol safety offline. A video module alone is not sufficient for students to effectively learn about important concepts like affirmative consent, microaggressions, and binge drinking. With discussions between shared governance leadership, I am confident that we can find a solution to make our onboarding acti activities for incoming students more effective. In the academic sphere, we hope to help increase four-year graduation rates by expanding the summer top tuition grant to transfer students. And to further support affordability, we will continue our governmental advocacy efforts surrounding tuition expenses, but we will also put our energy in places that allow us to think creatively about reducing non-tuition expenses. So we will continue working with SIT 6 to look at how the university can play a role in influencing Iowa City apartment, apartment rental rates and holding landlords accountable for taking advantage of vulnerable students. In addition, through our support of the new UI Food Pantry and the Student Garden, we hope to reduce the prevalence of food insecurity through affordable, healthy, local food right on campus. We also want to spend time this year looking at the internal workings of UISG to ensure our organization is truly serving students in the best way possible through improved communication and funding processes. Last night, I dug through old UISG records dating as far back as the 1990s. I have read through op-eds to the Daily Iowan and looked at old election documents and found that some of the issues we've identified this year are age-old issues. Communication, funding, transparency, all important topics that come up year after year, and we really hope to make progress on them this year for the benefit of UI students. One example, as Titus mentioned, how we've already begun working on this is that the speech is being live streamed to our Facebook page right now, so if anyone's out there, Thank you for being with us. <laughs> um, I care so much about these changes because I believe the potential of this organization. I'd like to remind my incredible team of people out there that we have one of the most empowered student governments that I have ever seen. We have resources, autonomy, and when we speak, people usually listen. This is the start of my fourth year in this organization. I joined as a freshman senator during the fall of 2013, and this job is by far, without a doubt, the greatest honor of my life because I know the potential of this organization. We have proof because exciting things have already happened this year. Thanks to the help of many people in this room tonight, we finally have a canvas stop for the cultural and resource centers on the west side of campus, which makes the newly rehabbed centers more accessible for our students. <laughs> Additionally, international students this year for the first time got to participate in Camp 
campus tours as part of their orientation to the university. We're seeing gender neutral restrooms and signage appear all over campus, including in the beautiful brand new Cantor Auditorium. Within UISG, we've reallocated resources to give more money to student organizations who depend on funds to travel, because that's a request we've gotten from students for years. And this weekend, we wrapped up the most successful UISG retreat I've seen in my four years in this organization, thanks to the hard work of Titus. Also exciting is the fact that other conversations have already begun to ensure this progress continues all year. Just a few examples. <laughs> Last week, we had meetings to discuss substance abuse recovery services for our students, improved police and student relationships, and bringing composting services back to campus to inspire a culture of sustainability. We're talking to legislators about tuition affordability, statewide medical amnesty, bike safety, and expansion of the Pell Grant. As you can see, at the student government level, we are tackling some of the biggest issues that face our world today. Our students have a lot in common. They want to come to campus, they want to feel welcome here, they hope to graduate within four years without crushing debt. Many of them want to earn a degree that will help them go out and make the world a better place. These are the reasons I ran for president because I know we can make this happen for our students and I know you do too because you're here with us tonight. I'm inspired by the fact that every Tuesday night, 70 undergraduate students get together voluntarily to find ways to work towards these shared goals together and enhance the student experience for our own peers. Moving forward, we must continue to be steadfastly committed to the issues we've discussed tonight until the problems I started with don't exist anymore. Overall, we are making progress, but that progress will only continue if the work continues. And I look forward to our continued work together. Like I said at President Harold's installation on Friday, I will graduate from this university in May, having learned many, many things. But one of the most important lessons I will take with me is that when we work together, we move forward faster and further to the benefit of everyone. It's going to be a phenomenal year. Thank you all so much.
In addition to these brick and mortar investments in diversity and inclusion on campus, we recognize the need for systemic changes within the university to better support minority students. Later tonight, you will hear from Senator Chloe Cable and GPSG Diversity Committee Co Chair Lawrence Chan to present one of our three joint resolutions to support all university efforts to increase faculty and staff diversity on campus. UI undergraduate students who identify as racial or ethnic minorities have six year graduation rates, 7.7 percentage points below those of non minority students, and similar trends are seen in our graduate student population. Increased diversity of faculty and staff, together with increased support and mentorship services, are required to help our minority students remain at the university and to reach their full potential. We hope you will. The delegates and uh, senators will help to support this important resolution later this evening. In addition, led by past GSS president and our current GPS secretary, Walter Dean, uh, GPSG, in collaboration with the Graduate College and various other departments on campus, is hoping to redefine minimum requirements for our students as teaching assistants. We are not only working to assure that the TAs are well trained in pedagogy to maintain and improve excellence in the classroom, but that our TAs are well trained and prepared, and prepared to, taste, to face the many challenges of, lead, of leading undergraduate classrooms. Facilitating difficult or controversial conversations, helping to prevent bias in the classroom, and providing TAs with the skills necessary to recognize students who may be struggling personally. Beyond the university, GPSG aspires to be advocating for graduate professional students to the Board of Regents, the General, and the General Assembly. Along with myself, our government, government, Governmental Relations Committee, co chaired by Anna Walsh and Sean O'Neill, are working to promote the graduate and professional financial, student financial retention incentive. I spoke about last year at the same meeting. This proposal will provide a monetary incentive to Iowa educated graduate and professional students who remain in the state for employment uh, up to, for up to five years within 10 years after graduating their education, uh, completing their education. Additionally, it would target higher incentives towards regions of the state that have shortages in particular professions. This proposal provides the state with a larger graduate and professional educated workforce to fill highly needed shortages in a variety of vital areas while simultaneously helping to secure the financial futures of our graduates. Furthermore, we hope this program will serve as a pipeline to attract Iowa undergraduates to remain in Iowa to pursue their graduate and professional careers. We currently have drafted like, uh, language that is now working its way to the, the legislative service of agency for a fiscal report. In addition, GPSG and UISG are working together with the Board of Regents and with, within the university with the UI administration on several issues Later tonight, you will hear a joint resolution presented by Senator Rayner and GPSG Delegate Sam Atari to recommend to UI administ administration, many of which are here today, that we increase the collaboration and transparency surrounding tuition decisions. We hope for earlier communication that will ensure that student voices have an adequate seat at the table in discussions on tuition. We want to ensure that any proposed increases are appropriately balanced with concerns for the affordability of higher education for our students. In addition, the resolution requests that UI administration release a full report of allocations funded by current tuition revenue and any proposed increases. We hope we will have the senators and delegates support, and we hope we have the administration's support in increasing collaboration and transparency on tuition. In particular to tuition, GPSG is specifically concerned with the cost of graduate and professional education and its discrepancy between resident and non-resident tuition. We have one of the highest non-resident to resident tuition ratios in our peer group, and we will continue to work with the Board of Regents to ensure that this concern is heard and help to alter tuition proposals to attempt to reduce this discrepancy and remain a competitive institution to obtain an excellent yet affordable education for non-resident and graduate professional students. This point brings me to our third and last joint resolution this evening, ensuring student voter turnout this November. Tuition increases are directly related to decreasing state of UISD and GPSG aim to register more than 4,000 students to vote to ensure a high student voter turnout because this election, both at the federal, state, and at the local levels, will have a direct impact on the politics of being education appropriations in Iowa and across the country. We need to make the change we want to see in this state and across the country, and I hope you will help us to make sure student voices are heard this coming November. I want to thank everyone again for being here tonight and for all that you do to improve the education and experience of students on this campus today and in the future. Thank you.
I did share a bit of history um, because I think it's important to understand where we've come from, what's our role in the past, because I think our past helps shape our future. We're a wonderful institution and wonderful on the, on the leading edge in many ways of the intersection between scholarship and practicality. And I gave some examples of that. But I think for this evening, and I'll just leave it at this, with our former President and President Emeritus Sandy Boyd said the following, at our core are the arts, humanities, and sciences, surrounded by well-integrated professional programs. The value of the basic disciplines lies in their continu continuing exploration of content and context. The professions depend on this exploration for their vigor, and the basic disciplines more fully serve society through their application by professions. They are linked. In fact, they are interlinked. So here again is this notion of the doing in today's world and exploration of why it works and where it's coming. This interlinked mission brings us together, I think, in many ways across the liberal arts, the sciences, and the professions. And I think that interlinking forms our core identity. Therefore, our mission is not just to prepare students for a job, but to prepare them to be critical thinkers, good citizens and lifelong learners. Our mission is not to indoctrinate students with a particular set of values, but to teach them to respect and understand myriad values, beliefs, and cultures. Our mission is not just to deliver short-term results, but to prepare our students for a lifetime of service marked by boundless curiosity, complex thought, and incisive judgment. Our overarching goal at the University of Iowa, therefore, is, I believe, to work together across the arts, humanities, sciences and professions in leading the discovery of what it means to be human, how those meanings inform our work in the world, and how to improve society for all members of the people. I've called upon us as a university community to dare ourselves last Friday to reimagine the university of the future. To do that, I believe we must retain, or excuse me, return to the idea that higher education is a right for all, not a privilege a few. We must thus broaden access in a multiple, multiple, multidisciplinary way. We must work with secondary schools and community colleges to improve student preparation to be here. We must do everything possible to drive down our costs while maintaining our competitiveness with other world-class institutions. We must continue to expand both our geographic and online reach. And we must move beyond mere mathematical admission standards to also measure judgment and character, which help us to better serve our students. We must also dare ourselves to evolve our curriculum. We've already started that in many ways, such as recently merging computer science and electrical engineering, creating Iowa's first social justice major, developing exciting new programs in the neurosciences, and advancing our environmental engineering and sustainability efforts. I ask you, and I ask all of us in this community, what else? What are the new ideas that we can bring to our students in the world? In our institutional progress, however, we must not forget to educate and reach out and touch each one of us directly. Not educate for the masses, but educate for the individual. And along those lines, we must rededicate ourselves to the, the notion of mentoring. A recent Gallup Purdue University study said that there were that five years out or more, one thing graduates looked back to on in their undergraduate experience was that the individual touching by some faculty or staff member to guide them through their journey. This individual touch was a critical moment for most of the folks as they graduated into their careers. And the question is, what are we doing? Are we doing enough? I believe not. I think we can step up. I think that's suggesting to us a big opportunity. And I pledged at that point to work with shared governments to figure out how to do that. Because it's a lot different when it's one on one versus 16. So we've got to think that through a lot of issues, but have the reward and sense to do the right thing for individuals. 
And in that context, I think we start pulling this back together. Uh, our mission needs them to improve the con human condition by preparing you, tomorrow's leaders, bringing new knowledge and helping the world apply it. And so doing, we must dedicate ourselves, I believe, to three things here. One is excellence. Whatever we do, we can't do everything, but whatever we do, we must do it in a world-class way. That means that we need to not spread our resources across everything, but choose. That's a novel idea for Iowans. We like to all be the same. I think we're going to have to make some choices. Secondly, we need to change and innovate. We need to innovate what we explore, what we teach, and how we share in the classroom. We must remain in a university that is not just relevant for today, but forward-looking to the future. And finally, we must maintain our core and respect our past. Our core of identity has always been rooted in the interplay between the best in the rule of arts and the sciences and world-class professional education. So must we be going forward. We have a great legacy of teaching, research, creative endeavor, and public service. To keep our unique levels of legacy thriving, we must also be exceedingly attentive to how we use our resources, where we're coming from, and I look forward to working with you on those hard issues as we move forward. Thank you very much. I think it's a very important issue as well, and it's really important for our students on our campus to have conversations about this and to increase their overall awareness. And I definitely support this resolution. Call for a vote. Uh, <coughs> Thank you. 
I think it's also important to point out that even when compared to our peer universities, the University of Iowa does less, there's less racial and ethnic minorities in terms of full-time faculty and tenure track position members. Um, we, we feel that because of the amount of people who put in work into this uh, joint resolution, there's a very strong uh, support for this from uh, both undergrad and graduate students. Um, this is a very important initiative for us and we're, we're very proud to stand here before you today to present this. Uh, now, uh, I support this resolution because over the weekend during our retreat, we were showing statistics of the new income classes. And 20% of them identified as minority students, whereas here it takes only 11.6% of total workforce identified as racial minorities. That's almost a 2 to 1 ratio per minority student to faculty. And as it is right now, in, talk, in, in talking with other faculty members, uh, in talking with the faculty and students, basically what the gist of what I got was that tenure or uh, staff members tend to be overloaded with not only just their workload, but along with uh, trying to mentor students who identify and look to them as well. Any other comments? Somebody. I support this resolution to add the fact that the University of Iowa wants to become a top class global uh, you know, university to compete with every other university in the world. I feel bringing diverse faculty, uh, faculty and staff will help us like bring more diversity into the university. Uh, thank you. Uh, I support this resolution to add the fact that the University of Iowa wants to become a top class global uh, you know, university to compete with every other university in the world. I feel bringing diverse faculty, uh, faculty and staff will help us like have diverse perspectives on campus and amazing discussions, which can lead to tremendous results. You know, so I support it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really we just want to see at the table when it comes to tuition. Uh, we have a two-prong approach here. Collaboration, which uh, will have us uh, attend a meeting um, prior to the uh, October Board of Regents meeting. And then two weeks prior to that meeting, uh, we would like documentation regarding tuition allocation. Essentially the goal of this resolution is to increase the student input um, when there are tuition increases being discussed and to get uh, different perspectives and discussions Yeah. Uh, is there any way that this information is going to be released to students 
other than Ingress on one site, such as they were released through email or other ways to contact people too? Because I know there's a lot of students that don't check use by website. Uh, Senator, who to whom were you asking?
EFG members. Our next meeting is October 4th. Uh, our next grants deadline, which is one of our best programs where we give away about $45,000 a year in grants and travel service and research grants to our students, which we've expanded this year due to uh, increased applications. Uh, is October 6th the grants are due, and October 8th we'll be holding game watch again in the Kinnick Press Box uh, to watch the game. Uh, we hope we see a lot of our professional students there. Thank you. Introduce your cabin, or she'll do, they'll do it. <laughs> Just sit down. Tom Rockman, Vice President of Student Life, and faculty member of the College of Education. Say thank you. I'm going to go back to the Senate. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the Senate. I'm going to go back to the Senate. Hi, I'm Tom Vaughn. I'm uh, President of the Faculty Senate. I'm in the College of uh, Public Health and Health Management Policy. I'm Pete Snyder. I'm Vice President of the Faculty Senate. There it is, please do it. Greetings. Uh, I'm Bruce Wood, I'm the past president of staff council and work in the community services. Hi, I'm Monica Madera, I'm on the executive committee of the staff council and the chair of the U.S. Relations Committee. I am in the College of Arts and Sciences, Academic Programs, and Development Office, and part of your students that we have to do a lot. I'm the staff council. I'm Don Lavery. I'm Vice President of the Staff Council and from the Office of Admissions. Don Watson, I'm the Budget Officer of Staff Council and I apologize for my dress, but I'm headed to work in the church after this. I'm Drew Marcello. I'm the Director of Student Life and 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 I'm the